want to talk a little bit about Cantor aids and Cantor departs and how um, a few things that um, we can focus on can really help the horse um, in those transitions and the up transitions and the down transitions and to get started I think it's important just to um, review the aids again there are different ways of taking a horse into the canter um, I like to think of my weight aids first and since the outside hind leg regardless of whether you're coming from the walk or from the trot the outside hind leg um, the horse's outside leg is the one that strikes the ground first in the up transition into the canter and the inside pair of legs has to come forward I find it useful to sit just a little bit more to the outside so that the horse has an, an easier time to bring the inside legs forward um, so to prepare the horse let's say I'm in a sitting trot I will think a little bit of riding a little bit of shoulder four or shoulder in like perhaps I might also think about you know condensing the trot steps a little bit so anything to help the horse in, you know engage a little bit more behind and and prepare to take up a little bit more weight um, back there and so in order to do that you know you're going to sit in the trot you put your outside leg back and leave it there just a few steps before you want to actually go into the departure and I think of the outside leg in the canter as the supportive leg not necessarily the main driving leg which is why it just mostly just rests there and it adds you know the the second part of the embrace that the horse should feel from the rider but the inside leg is the one that actually cues the horse into the first canter stride and then it stays the predominantly driving leg so that you will sit on your horse you will you know let yourself become part of the wave motion that the canter offers that beautiful up and down swooping of the of the back coming up and um, you know expanding and contracting muscles underneath you and then when you go down into the valley of the of the wave you're gonna let for a moment almost think that you're gonna let go of the tension in your legs a little bit and let yourself be taken and really sit down and feel maybe the the heels sinking downward and then you're going to cup your horse with both legs in their individual positions <laughs> and it's as if you're going to scoop them up into the next up upward part of the wave motion so it's like a bit of a I always think it's a little bit like a jellyfish that embraces the horse in the down transition of the canter stride and then in, when they come up in front of you and the hind legs are starting to push a little bit more underneath again then you're going to scoop your horse up with both legs and you're bringing your pelvis up a little bit and you are just kind of helping them to be light so it's weighing down in the down part of the wave and you know scooping up and lifting up without you know taking too much you know muscles muscle tension in your in your legs but just kind of gently and naturally um, think up and up and your inside lower leg will be the one that helps over and over with the process of the inside pair of legs to come forward and then when you come when you're ready to come to your down transition you're gonna let yourself fall even deeper into the valley of that wave motion of the last canter stride and you're gonna breathe out and by breathing out you're actually what what you're gonna do if you keep a little bit of positive tension in your upper legs and your knee pressure increases in that moment too then you're going to shorten this the space between your sternum and your belly button so in effect you're going to go down like that as if it's like a martial arts out breath put your knees on let your lower outside leg come forward so that you um, make the horse understand we're not in canter mode anymore and then you're going to you know have a little bit of an accentuation of all of that inhibiting um, body language that you're that you're um, using for your to, to explain this to your horse you 
accentuated by a little bit of a squeezing on the inside and then a little bit more on the outside rein while your inside leg pushes. I know that's a lot of, a lot of stuff to think about, but it's just good to, um, every once in a while, just to recall these individual pieces. So then you can, you know, watch a video like this every once in a while and, and the more you focus on maybe one or two things at first and then more you add more, the more these things become automated and the more you can enjoy um, better and more finely tuned riding in the canter and in these up transitions. So I'm going to pick up the reins here and go into a bit of a, po a sitting trot in a moment. And one more thing I want to say first is it's, it's really helpful not to canter too long when you start out with this a little bit more um, conscious type of aid um, application. Um, just think half a circle. We're on a maybe 20 meter circle right now. Half a circle um, in the sitting trot and half a circle in the canter. Yeah. So I have Coley in a sitting trot, a little bit shorter stride, like to have him focus a little bit on taking up the weight behind. So here's my outside leg going back without pressure. Inside leg goes forward and on. There is the candidate part. And we're just going to do it until we come here. Breathe out. Outside leg goes forward. The pressure increases and in sitting trot. So again, making the trot a little bit shorter here. Outside leg goes back. Inside leg goes forward and on. So there you go. Good, 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 good. Oh, back, exactly. Sitting trot. Important that the trot is really not running or fast. The outside leg goes back again. Inside leg goes forward and on. And make sure that I don't lean forward so his shoulders can come up in front of me. So, breathe out. Outside leg goes forward again. And there we go. We'll do it one more time. Oh, good boy. Outside leg back, inside leg forward. Yeah. So, very good. So, and out breathing. Sitting trot. So, we're going to change directions here. We'll do a little bit to the other side. And again, the trot is very measured at this point. Outside leg goes back, inside leg is forward and on. So, breathe out. Exactly, there you go, back into the sitting trot. So, oh, good boy. Slow him down a little bit in the trot. Think a little bit of shoulder four and go in to that next up transition again. There you go. So, breathe out. Out I leg comes forward, knee pressure. And then immediately in the sitting trot, you know, you have lower leg rhythmic impulse. There again, canter, up transition, just like I described. And it's just important that you just stick to this pattern for a little bit so that the horse can actually find that there is a level of predictability going on. We're going to do it again here. Up, come. So, and the reason I'm doing the candidate parts towards the rail is that they provide a little bit of a steady visual barrier for the horse. And it is actually much easier for them to canter up in, in this area here than it is on the open part of the circle where they might, you know, drift a little bit if you don't have your weight aids completely in place. So I'm going to let him canter here for a whole round now. So, so, back to sitting trot. Good. And back to walk. And that's just one way of, you know, engaging your horse in sitting trot and canter departures and it may look like 
no no big deal but you know depending on your horses and your own le um, level of sort of expertise these exercises are always wonderful um, reminders of you know what it means when the horse is on the aid that means that at any time he should be ready for anything <laughs> an up transition a down transition a halt you know all these things it has to do with the availability or the accessibility of the horse to the to the rider's aids and that accessibility is partially you know part of the horse's personality and temperament but it also has to do with you know ongoing training and sensitizing the horse to the aids and the more you you practice these kinds of exercises the more finally your horse will to be, be tuned and you can be lighter and lighter with your aids and then you can move forward to the next wonderful movement level <laughs> with your horses okay and that's it <laughs> good boy my dear